What's up guys, I'm Matt here and we're looking at proportion. Now proportion's a really, really big topic. So we're just looking at some key questions in this uh, topic, but these aren't really gonna cover every single proportion question that you can come across. However, they're a good range. So first up is AQA on the calculator paper. And we're asked to convert um, kilograms, so 70 kilograms, which is this one here, into stones, which is this one here. Okay, so we've got to first convert the kilograms into pounds, and then we've got to convert the pounds into stones. Okay, so we've got kilograms on this side, and we've got pounds on this side. The weight pounds. <laughs> okay, so one kilogram is equal to roughly 2.2 pounds, and we need to change 70 of them. So what we're going to do here is we need to times this side by 70. And so because we times that by side by 70, we've got to times that by side by 70. So do 2.2 times 70. And we got 154. I'll do it in the same color. 154. Okay, now we need to convert pounds into stone. Okay, so pounds. And we have stone. I'm just going to do it the other way around. I don't know why. We could put stones. Right. So we've got 154 pounds. And we're looking to see how many stones. So actually we'll start off with the conversion. So it says 14 pounds is equal to one stone. And we know we've got 154 pounds. Okay, we can't do it, well we can, but it's easier not to do it in one step. It's easier to find out what one pound is first. And so we need to divide this side by 14 and divide this side by 14. And so we just get like 1 over 14. Okay, and then to get from 1 to 154, we times by 154. So it's sometimes easier to go to one first and then make your way to the answer. So we've got um, one over 14 times 154, which is 11. So it's 11 stone. Now all of these say use that, which means that uh, one kilogram isn't exactly 2.2, but it's saying just you assume that it is what's the answer going to be, and the answer is 11. Now, um, to do the this step here, what we could have done was uh, 154 divided by 14. And that's the way of doing it, kind of in one step. But I find this method a lot easier to show um, what's going on, like what exactly are we doing. Next up, we've got Ed Excel's question. Now, this is on the non-calculator paper. Um, so we will have to do some uh, calculations. Um, so first of all, we're looking at the weight of um, four tins of soup. So we've got soup on this side and weight on this side. And we've got five tins of soup are equal to 1,750 grams. And I really could have put an arrow there rather than equals, but I'll leave it as an equals for simplicity. Now I can't go straight to four. I can but not without a calculator so what I'm going to do is just go to one first so to go to one and let's just do some different colors just so it's a bit easier so to go to one we need to divide by five and so we need to divide this by five and so let's do this over here so we've got we're dividing 1750 by five so fives into one don't go, so carry it. Fives into 17 go three times, remainder two. Fives into 25 go five. Fives into zero go zero. So that'd be 350. Then to get to four, I need to times it by four. Times that side by four. Again, so we're doing what? 350 times four. Four times zero is zero. Four times five is 20. 4 times 3 is 12, plus the 2 is 14, so it would be 1,400. And just check that makes sense. Well, 5 tins of soup is 1,750, so 4 tins of soup, yeah, that looks about right, 1,400. Okay, so we've got the, um, the soup sorted, this bit here, 
it says it has a total weight of that. So what we can do is just take that away. And we probably don't need to show the working out for this, but we're going to do it anyway. So take away 1,400, obviously equal to 90. Okay, and so three packets of soup, so three packets, so really I should put tins, just to make it really clear. So packets of soup and uh, weight. So three packets of soup will then be the, what's left over, which is 90. And it's saying work out the total weight of three tins of soup and two packets of soup. So let's get one packet of soup. So we need to divide this by three. We can do this in our head, this. So one equals 30. And so we've got one tin of soup, um, which is here. So one tin of soup is here and one packet of soup is here, which is good. So we need three tins of soup. So we need to do uh, 350 times three. So zero, 15, nine, 10. So that'd be 1,050. Uh, so that's three tins. Try and show the examiner roughly what, what working out is doing what and two packets so um well we can work that out quite easily so um pack uh, two packets will just be two times 30 because one packet is 30 so it would be 60. so the last thing to do is um 1050 plus 60 is 1,110 grams. Pretty complicated question, really. Loads and loads of steps. But you've just got to do a bit at a time. Just work out what you can. Um, and it's one of these questions that's, what, four marks? And you probably get a mark very, very quickly. Um, probably just for um, doing, I don't know, 1,750 divided by five would get you a mark. And the second mark is slightly harder to get. The third mark, you probably have to almost finish the question. And obviously for the fourth mark, you need the correct answer and the correct working out. Last up is our OCR question. Now, um, this question was the very last question on the paper. Um, so it's theoretically, it's the hardest question on the paper. You'll find that um, for question B, it's exactly the same as we've done before, but you don't have a context. Now, What's really important to understand is what does directly proportional mean? Um, everything we've been doing in this video so far have been things that are directly proportional. So if you have one of something that costs 30 pence or weighs 30 grams or whatever, if you have two of it, you'll have double as much, right? The important thing about direct proportion is if you have zero of it, so if I have zero ice creams, they will cost zero pounds. If I have zero... Uh, I don't know, what was it, tins of soup, they will weigh zero kilograms, okay? So it has to be, and for it to be direct proportion, it has to start at zero on both sides, whatever it is. And now here it's X and Y, but it can be anything. If, if it doesn't, then it is not direct proportion. So a direct proportion graph will look like this. It will start at the origin. Okay, so it says explain how you know y is not directly proportional to x. You just need something like, um, I don't know, it does not go through, and you could say the origin or zero, zero. Okay, it has to be di to be direct proportion. The other thing it needs to do, uh, needs to be is a straight line, um, which it is. So if it's a straight line and it goes through the origin, then the two things are directly proportional. Right, next bit, uh, it says uh, Q is directly proportional to R. Now what that means is as Q doubles, R will double. As Q halves, R will half. Okay, And then it gives us a value of Q and R. So I'm going to write this out just as I've done it before. I'm going to have R on the left-hand side and Q on the right-hand side. It doesn't really matter which way around you put them. And so it says when R is 20, 
then Q is 68. Okay, find out what Q is when R is 25. Well, see how this is exactly the same as we've done for the rest of the video. So we need to find out what one of it is by dividing it by 20 and divide this by 20. So that will be 68 over 20. And then I just need to times that by 25. Times that by 25. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 68 over 20 and then times 25, which is 85. Now what I could have done, and I haven't really shown this before, but I'm going to show it now, is I could have worked out how I get from 20 to 25. Now to do that, I just do 25 divided by 20, and I get 1.25. So I could times it by 1.25. So all I need to do with the 68 is then times it by 1.25. Now let's try that and see if we've got it right. So times 1.25 and we get 85. So we get the same answer either way. Um, that um, kind of blue method might be easier for you um, and it might be quicker. In fact, it's definitely quicker. But I find finding one of them and then finding 25 of them to be much simpler to look at and check later on to see whether I've got it right. And as we've seen on the previous question, sometimes you need to know what one of them um, weighs or costs or whatever. Um, but the only difference with this and the reason why it's grade five is it uses Q and R rather than amounts and weights. Well, I hope you found today's video useful. If you did, please click like. If you want to see more from us, we release videos Monday to Friday. Just click that subscribe button and click the bell icon to make sure you're up to date with all the videos we release. If you haven't already, I'm sure you have, check out our website on maths.com. There will be a card that magically appears at the top of the screen now. Uh, on the website, there's loads of free resources. Everything there is completely free for you to check out. Loads and loads of stuff on there, so feel free to browse the site. Otherwise, thank you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow.